Hello friends, Dennis Nappy II with Service of Change, where we challenge reality, question it which we've been taught in hopes of inspiring a new direction of thought to bring about change. We're resuming our discussion through the secret book of John in the Nag Hammadi Library. And last week, week we were talking about uh, the birth of Yeldabaoth from Sophia, and we talked about Yeldabaoth's word, world order. I want to resume another section of that piece there, where it states, Yeldabaoth stationed seven kings, one for each sphere of heaven, to reign over the seven heavens, and five to reign over the depth of the abyss. He shared his fire with them, but he did not give away any of the power of the light he had taken from his mother, for he is ignorant darkness. So let's break this down. I'm looking at the footnotes here where it talks about the seven kings. And it refers to the seven kings probably correspond to the seven planetary spheres for the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn that were described by ancient astronomers. So it's talking about the, the power that he had in the creation of our solar system. And I think that's interesting to note in how we, if you, if you look at ancient astrology, the powers that these spheres may have over us as we break this down even further and understand maybe the power that they had over mankind. I think it's just something worth noting. Now, he sh it says he shared his fire with them, but he did not give away any of the power of the light he had taken from his mother, for he is ignorant darkness. Now, what what is that fire? Are we talking in an astronomical sense, representative of the sun? Are we talking in a spiritual sense? Or metaphysical sense or are we talking in both it's something to consider who is this Yeldabaoth who we're going to find is is not a very positive being especially in relationship to humanity we're going to be moving into exploring ultimately hopefully by the end of this week the first human appears and his influence with Yeldabaoth and into the Garden of Eden and the negative influence that these Archons have on mankind. We're trying to break down and get the backstory here first as to where they come from and what was being put in place before mankind arrived. And we're going to find in future talks that Yeldabaoth becomes this very jealous creature and declares himself the only God. As we go through this, you'll see exactly what that means and how it can impact ultimately the version of history that we've been told something to consider something to, comp to ponder as we move into our next episode of daily gnosis please don't forget to check out service of change check the latest episode of the secret podcast and subscribe to the secret newsletter at serviceofchange.com thanks for listening friends